Hey everyone, Zian over here from Nintendo Life. I just got done this this past weekend playing the Live Alive demo. I've previewed a tiny bit of the game and I'm incredibly excited about what I've played so far. So excited that I wanted to pull two other people into this uh, digital room with me to chat about our experiences with the demo uh, and why you should play this game. Today we're talking about Live Alive coming to Nintendo Switch. This is a remake. Uh, and I am joined by the never late and always great Kate Gray. Hello. That was very cool. All Thank those you. rhymes. I prepped that one. Can you tell? Oh, you did? I did. I feel so special. <laughs> but we're also joined by our consistent Square Enix RPG consultant at this point, Kevin Kenson. This is our third one, huh? On this very specific subject matter. Yeah, that makes sense. It is. <laughs> that checks out. <laughs> well, you, you brought it up. I think in the last discussion that we did about Chrono Trigger that you were like, yeah, you're, you were just like the on standby Nintendo Life, like fourth member. And I was like, man, he's it was pretty consistent, like at that point. Uh, and uh, I will say, I think Kate, Kate is more of the fourth member. But you are also uh -huh. you you are really like you have a great batting average, Kevin. You are here often and I love it. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, of course. Love being here. And uh, I'll make sure to send over the invoice for my consultation. <laughs> Wait, you've been getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> so Live Alive, we've all played the demo that's available on the eShop. Yeah. It's available on Switch. You don't have to be a special human being to get it. You just have to have a Switch. Just go download the demo and play it. You can be a special human being if you want, but it won't help. That's true. And I, I, I think it is fair to argue that if you play the demo, you are a special human. Aww. So wait, are we saying that people that don't play the demo aren't special? Because that feels mean, actually. Well, I mean, if they just play the demo, then they, <laughs> they have nothing to worry about. Confirmation is right right there, you know. Uh, or if they have the game pre-ordered, I would say they're also special. This is not a sponsored post, by the way. <laughs> so Kevin, you, you've you played the original Live Alive or Live Alive as you trained your brain to think it was called, which I, I don't blame you at all. Yeah, seriously. Uh, yeah, so there was a fan translation uh, that in my younger years when I was grabbing more games that way uh, that I played. And I absolutely adored it. I mean, it's one of these titles that just never came to the West officially. I, I think you saw my reaction video when the Nintendo Direct announced it. Like, I, I lost my mind. I never thought, like, this is such a strange, unique little title, and I can't even imagine what the boardroom pitch was for like, hey, you know that one that was like back <laughs> in the 90s, Live Alive? What if we just, you know, what if we remade that? I don't, I don't know who got that like up the chain of command, but I love I, I have absolutely been imagining that someone at Square Enix is just in charge of the archives and they keep digging out games and being like, yeah, okay. Going to the boss and being like, how about this one? And you know, he gets a yes, like one in 10 games. They're like, yeah, sure. You're not wrong <laughs> yeah. though. It does really feel like kind of the era, this new era that like Square Enix is kind of creating for themselves is really special i mean we're getting lots of re lots of ports lots of weird mm -hmm. little remakes uh but it's i feel like tw the 2010s was like action guns and uh <laughs> and now we're getting swords again and and magic and it's uh it's really fun yeah, yeah. not a lot of swords in live life that i've seen yeah so far. That, that's a good point <laughs> love kicking it comes up <laughs> I guess I should also preface that, because I, I don't know if we mentioned that or not, but this is actually a, a remake of uh, a 1994 Super Famicom mm -hmm. game. It's like 28 years ago. Yep. Yeah. So I feel like the point that both of you are getting across here is that this feels so random, doesn't it? I, but I heard that this game was, or this remake was a big passion project for a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the developers on it. And I've even seen mm -hmm. too that uh, a lot of the kind of like original like talent and creators for the um, the original game are kind of like overseeing the production of this new version as well you got you got a great you got a great hand of cards here with the with the developers and everything yeah. i think i i wrote a piece that is not live so i'm very sorry i'm gonna be spoiling this piece <gasps> that isn't out yet that's uh, basically like everything you need to know about live alive because i think a lot of us came to it being like wait what is it why what um and i i can't exactly remember um W which question this was the answer to but basically i think uh, some of the people that had worked on the original game were constantly trying to get square enix to remake it it did not sell well oh. it sold like just over two hundred thousand copies i think in japan um and they were like oh never mind then but then some of the team recently have been working on the hd 2d games that square enix have been, has been making like octopath traveler and triangle strategy and they've been like, well, if we can go to the higher ups and be like, I have another candidate for, for the HD 2D. It was Tokita, oh, who awesome. eventually worked yeah. on the Oxpath Travel team. 
and was like, this would work really well for my game. And that's one of the reasons that it's it's getting made now. <laughs> that, uh, you know, it, it was a nice synergy of something that the original creators wanted and something that Square Enix themselves wanted. So that's cool. Yeah, it's really nice that they're getting like the, the chance to make the things that they want and to give this game like another shot. Because I think yeah. even for, I feel like a lot of people out there maybe have like heard of this game or maybe seen like, a, a video on the internet about it from like did you know gaming mm-hmm. but i think it's really special too that like kevin that like you you really went out of your out of your way to uh to play uh the original uh as well um so it, it's it's got to be so cool and i watched your direct reaction video you know you really did freak out and it was well deserved because this is uh just what a what a game what a game to bring back um yeah and and that it's also nintendo's interest too right because they're actually producing this correct? Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think in the West, I think uh, Japan, I think it's still, I think it's just in Square's hands, but you're right in yeah. in mm-hmm. the West here, it's Nintendo. Yeah, it, it sort of gives me hope that uh, all of the really niche games that I want to come back <laughs> may someday in another 15 years actually get interest and we'll have developed a new cool art style by then, like HD 3D or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's just normal games. <laughs> <laughs> what it, it is it is pretty crazy how there are moments in in the um in the shinobi chapter of uh live alive in, in in the demo you'll see this yourself too if you if you go play it or if you have already uh and by you i mean the audience there there are parts where i like i understand that this was a super nintendo game but i feel like they've mm-hmm. done so much with it to really make it so special and and really take advantage of the hd 2d like you can really tell that a lot of the like shots, the way that the camera pans was created so delicately, I would say, and purposefully. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like there were moments where I just kind of wanted to like let the shinobi, uh, Ober, I'm going to b- completely butcher Obo- the name. Oboromaru. Yeah. I think. Wait, I have it written uh, down Obo- somewhere. Yeah. That sounds it's, right. It's, uh- yeah, Oboroboru. <laughs> oh my gosh, I completely butchered that in the preview then. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, no. bad. You could probably just do like Oboro for short, and I think most people would yeah. get where you're going. Okay, I okay. called him something else as well. What did I call him? Bimble. I called him Bimble. Bimble. Excellent. Oh, right, because yeah, you can change his name. I don't know name. why. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's weird because it's like, it's like you can name your characters, but it, it doesn't add anything. Because whether you choose the name they give you or not... None of the voice acting includes the name, so <laughs> yeah, it's right. It is weird. such it is such like an RPG thing. Like maybe it's a bigger yeah. thing in Japan to for people to like you know really immerse themselves in the games. They they add their name, and yeah. I I've, I've felt that before. You know, like when a character in an RPG like calls my name, just even in the text. Sometimes I'm like, <gasps> like oh chills. That's me. Oh yeah, that is. I never wild. pick my own name because it feels weird when I'm like someone who looks nothing like me, like like Cube. Cube doesn't look like me. He's a robot. <laughs> what do you mean? Ball. You don't wear a hat. You, you have glasses. I, I do. That's the one similarity that <laughs> me and the futuristic robot have is that we wear glasses. Why does he wear glasses? He's a robot. Uh, yeah, it's personality. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he just has well, really bad like... eyes. Sorry. Go go on. <laughs> oh no. I think it's also supposed to be a thing that like his maker kind of lightly bases him off himself because like the, yeah. the guy that makes him like also has glasses on i mean as far as you can tell True. in uh, the art sure. style <laughs> oh that's cute though isn't it actually weirdly i uh I, I liked the cube episode the least out of the three. Oh yeah um but i think that's because i didn't understand it so like we can get into this later but each one of the chapters sort of requires you to figure out the weird thing it's doing so one of the chapters is like which approach do you want to take to sneaking into the castle? And then the distant future one, which stars Cube on a spaceship, is about, like, instead of being a sort of typical JRPG fight a bunch of guys, it's like, walk around a spaceship and read everyone's diary. (laughs) And I didn't do that. So I was just walking around a spaceship and it was a little boring. I forget what point I was trying to make. What point was I trying to make? Just in terms of, like, not really knowing what the the gimmick with that one is or why it felt kind of weak. Yeah. Uh, Which I will say, you know, having... I I don't really want to get too much into what's not represented in the demo since I kind of cheated a little bit and played the fan translation (laughs) way back when. Um, I I will say that I'm a little surprised they picked Cube for, for the demo because there is a gimmick, but it doesn't really come up until, like, the second half. 
Um, okay. And yeah. it's it's probably the most narrative driven one too. Like it is a lot of talking, and then eventually mm-hmm. there's kind of some other stuff going on. Um, so it was very odd to me that you know, especially not getting the full chapter, that that was one of the ones they picked. Because yeah, the the demo is basically I hope you really like Alien because you're <laughs> going to be playing a slightly different version of that talking yeah. to a lot of people. Oh, I remember what I was going to say now that uh, just today actually I watched the episode of Star Trek that it uh, is about Data having a child. And I was like, wow, this is, this is just like Lobo Life. <laughs> <laughs> Probably they are not related. It's, it's a pretty common story, but I, I think that's a nice little, uh, I don't know, serendipitous moment that I'm just like, yeah, creators and their children and robots. And whoa, what does it mean? <laughs> You know, you might not actually be that far off, though, because I think one of the really cool things that's showcased a little bit in the demo, and maybe this is why they picked uh, the cube chapter as one of Mm -hmm. them, uh, is not only does each chapter kind of have its own little gimmick and they're all different like snippets of different settings and that kind of thing, but each of them really does kind of feel like a celebration of certain types of media. They all have very clear inspirations. I mean, again, the cube chapter is basically alien. I mean, from the opening shot, it's like recreating the intro of that movie. Yeah. One of the ones that we've seen in the trailers, but not in the demo at least, is the uh, the modern day fighting chapter, which plays mm-hmm. out like a fighting game. I mean, it has a little fighter select screen that you can see in the trailer. <laughs> it, it's a very interesting sort of like timepiece where it's just celebrating all these other kinds of very popular stories or media at the time that it was made, which is super neat. I love it. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote um, in my Live Alive explainer, I wrote a sort of brief view on each of the chapters and I kind of got that but like didn't quite until you said it just now which makes me think that it is a little weird that two out of the three demo chapters are quite similar because they're both Mm. about like a master of something and a young person that they're training trying to prove themselves so that's like the the kung fu one and the feudal japan one where you play a shinobi i was kind of getting those mixed up in my head a little bit because i'm like wait am i am i a ninja yes i'm a ninja this time because i'm running on the roof that's how you know that it's a ninja (laughs) they love they love running on roofs Uh, that's all (laughs) that's all they do i think yeah (laughs) more or less I guess it's fair to say that the, oh gosh, the cube chapter in in, in mm-hmm. outer space, you know, there's no... Yeah, it's called Mechanical Heart, by the way. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. there's so many different like little titles for a lot of these chapters. Even like when you look online, <laughs> like some, you'll find another cha- or title that like isn't represented in the game and you're like, where, where did you get mm-hmm. that title? Where, where, why are you calling <laughs> yeah. it? Why are you calling it that? Yep. Yeah, a lot of it's probably like guesswork translations from back in the day because again Mm. there is like a fan translation of this and so i'm sure there were a lot of like attempts at like i think this Mm. title's meant to be this and they might have been close that might have been wrong it's actually really interesting seeing where there are uh some differences between them uh and the translations i think one that i noticed right away in the uh imperial china chapter where you're you're that's the martial arts and and raising a pupil Mm -hmm. one of them uh, in the original fan translation, I want to the the bigger pupil who the, it, who's like you're helping I with the food. I think it's Hong Haka. Yeah. So in in this version, he's Hong Haka, and in the original, uh, in the fan translation at least, he was Samo Haka. And the reason why that's interesting is because he's clearly uh, an allusion to Samo Hong, who is a very popular uh, martial artist in film, oh. uh, who was like a little bit of a bigger build. You know, he didn't uh, look like yeah. the typical super, you know, uh, cut down muscular kind of guy. I mean, he mm-hmm. was big and he's an allusion to that. So it's really interesting seeing how both the fan translation and the, you know, this now official one both point towards that, but not the same way, uh, which is how we also get those chapters that I think, yeah, you're seeing different names because people yeah. were probably just taking stabs in the dark back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, uh, Cube is also a reference uh, to Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, that makes oh, sense. not the GameCube. Dang it. It's 1994, Zeon. Just thinking <laughs> didn't ahead. Have it yet. <laughs> Just thinking ahead. They were hinting. Square Enix oh, knew. Yeah. They're square at the time, knew. <laughs> oh, yeah, because Kubrick did the uh, 2064 Space Odyssey, was it? Something like that? Yeah, you're thinking of uh, 2001 Space oh, Odyssey. Yeah. Which, again, yeah, it's, it's all leaning into popular sci fi film of the, you know, that had come out, basically. Kate, how did you feel about... Because did you play the the Shinobi like ninja chapter first? I played the Imperial China one with the Kung Fu Master and the three random people that he finds. <laughs> uh, I then played the Feudal Japan one where you play a Shinobi who's like, I'm new at this, but I'll save you. 
<laughs> and then I played Cube, uh, Cube's chapter, which is, yeah, 2001 Space Odyssey kind of vibes. Okay. Or Alien. Bit of both. Yeah. Well, and that was... That was very similar. I, I basically just did the Shinobi chapter first, and then I did the Imperial mm-hmm. China one. But then when I when I like personally got to the 2001 Alien directed by Ridley Scott, <laughs> I yep. was completely thrown off by what I was even playing because I was just yeah. so surprised by it. like I didn't know if I was playing a horror game or like is this yeah. still an RPG? And then actually Kevin and I were DMing a little bit, and I was telling him like how far into the demo I was. And you said you said something to me about like, have you played the alien one yet? And this was <laughs> even before I had gotten into the room where you awaken the people, and mm. I was like, alien, <laughs> like, what, what, what do you what do you mean, Kevin? Uh, and like the the you know dots start or the boxes started getting checked in my head as I was playing through it, and it was yeah. uh, I think I enjoyed it more because I I really do like the alien movies or at least the first one, and uh, and so for me I kind of had this. Uh, uh, I was I was surprised by it, and, and like seeing the variety that these different chapters can offer was really cool too. But I do completely agree that it kind of lacks direction in a way. But I I don't. It's tough because like you know you you might not spend a whole lot of time getting lost, but and and you might enjoy kind of exploring. But I do think that you know um, some people might get lost for way longer than others, and might get frustrated yeah. and want and put it down and. Uh, so was was that kind of your your takeaway from it? Was that it was it was just frustrating, kind of not uh, not um, knowing where to go? So I I have this uh, sort of pet uh, project, if you will, in my head that is specifically about JRPGs or J style RPGs, at least, which I I call the go left problem. So imagine you're playing, for example, a Final Fantasy game, and you have two paths in front of you. One of them. If you go down, it will continue the plot and you won't be able to go back. The other one is full of prizes and treasure chests. You want to figure out which one is full of prizes and treasure chests, right? Mm -hmm. But some games don't, especially early JRPGs, don't give you any indication of that. And so Live Alive does have a bit of that going on where it's like, I don't know which of these like three paths is going to advance the story and which one is going to give me items or armor (laughs) that will make me better at the game. (laughs) Um, It does have like a map that sort of tells you roughly where the story is, you know, it has a little orange flag on it. So you can at least follow that. But it's not always easy because it's not a very linear map. You know, it's not like you're going out from A to B. You're sometimes just going around in a big spiral. Um, So I did find that sometimes I was having this go left problem where I I call it go left, by the way, in a reference to (laughs) platformers, where the first thing I do in any platformer is go left because there's always a prize there. That's great. I totally understand. Yeah, Donkey Kong Country, (laughs) I feel especially has like drilled that into your brain or at least mine. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, and And that was even the big like kind of initial twist with uh, the original Metroid, right? Is you try to just go right and you can't progress and oh, you had to go <laughs> left at the start to get this power up. You're Whoa. right. It was like yeah. the, that was like the mind bending at the time, right? Because not really any games did that yet. <laughs> yeah. I never but thought now about how momentous you, that was. You yeah. sort of, you play a modern game and you expect that. You expect, like I've been playing Hollow Knight, for example, Metroidvanias do this a lot and Metroid obviously, where um, they will sort of try to signpost which is the way forward so that you can ignore the signpost, if that right. makes sense. Um, and I think... No, completely. Yeah. I think Live Alive sort of lacks that for obvious reasons. It's from 1994, which was before going left was really a thing. So yeah, especially in the Shinobi chapter, I found myself being like, I don't know where I am or where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, not too bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, which I will say, I, I feel like the Shinobi chapter is also kind of not only uh, does it like not do that you know the idea of signaling where the plot is Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very much intentionally so I don't think it's just a holdover of its age but yeah uh, you know this game was really ambitious for its time in the sense that it's very experimental with a lot of I mean again each chapter kind of have its own has its own little weird gimmicks some of which work out Mm -hmm. great and some of which uh, not so much Mm -hmm. and the big one with the shinobi chapter is it's very non-linear like it doesn't really tell you what you're supposed to do like you have a goal of kind of where to go but it's a very big game of like kind of just navigating it yourself finding what passages to take deciding Mm -hmm. if you want to try and kill enemies or sneak by them 
it's very much into like figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's almost that old school RPG thing of like the the quest giver doesn't tell you where to go. You have to talk to every person in town first, and then you kind of get an idea. <laughs> yeah, I think of the three, the uh, the Shinobi chapter. I actually came away from it being like that was interesting. Inheritance which is the name of the uh, Kung Fu one, is pretty standard. It has a fun moment when you go to a village full of sick old people. That was quite fun, I think. The ninja one is a little more unusual in terms of like typical JRPG stuff, where, yeah, you you are this inexperienced baby ninja, um, and you're like, oh, I can probably handle it. And then, like, literally all they tell you is that you can go invisible if you want. <laughs> You're like, what do you mean? Yeah. And you have to figure out how to use it in context. You have to figure out if you should use it or if you should just try and kill people. I kept getting killed by like massive groups of other ninjas. It was crazy. No idea what was happening. Well, and, and that is... Th <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of like how Kevin was saying that this game was like incredibly ambitious. And I, I think like that chapter in specific felt so ahead of its time to me yeah. from what you know we've played so far in the fact that when you make your first few kills or, or whatever it a, a death counter pops up on the screen right and it tells you how many people you've killed and my first thought was like yeah. oh do do i have to kill people can i can i not mm -hmm. kill people uh is this undertale and so i <laughs> stopped killing people and started avoiding people but then you like you said kate you come across these large groups of enemies uh, or even yeah. a fun thing that you want to try to defeat uh, and then you can't so you kind of I don't know if it's going to add like an amount of replay value to the game potentially but I'm when the full game is here I'm really excited to like dive back into it fully go through one way and then mess around and, and try and do other things too because it it seems like kind of like what Kevin was even saying too about like how it's 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 easy to get lost in the castle and, and on the grounds but it does kind of feel to me, it also kind of felt a bit intentional as well, because if you look around in certain corners and you find secret doors, hidden passageways, I didn't realize that was a thing until I like went and reread the tips screen, because uh, I was like, How, where do I go right now? Yeah. Uh, but then when I learned that, I was starting to have so much fun with it, because I was finding weird little snippets of dialogue that I felt like I, I wasn't supposed to find, and it was, it was so just like genuinely amusing and, and just f fun um i think that was my favorite chapter overall uh even though you know like the the cube uh mechanical heart one really surprised me i think this one mm. was just kind of a world that i i didn't really want to i didn't really want to leave like i played you know you you the demo will take you to a point and it'll be like oh thanks for playing but then you can load back in the demo yeah. and you can you could say no i'm going a different way <laughs> uh, and you can see more stuff right. and and uh how, how, did, how did you feel about like what the demo offered oh i just had a, a random thought i actually started the demo up real quick to double check this to, to make sure i wasn't making up things in my oh head. nice thanks um uh, on the subject of the idea of go left uh, if you haven't yet, you should also start the ninja chapter and go down. What? I will just say that. What? Yep. Anyway, okay, did you know about um, that? <laughs> huh. Okay, so interesting. <laughs> when I was at the start of that chapter, it sort of goes, well, the, the character that you're playing goes, well, I could fight everyone or I could sneak in. Mm. And I was expecting there to be a way to sneak in. Like I was expecting there to be a side door or something mm. because otherwise you just have to walk up to these guards, immediately turn invisible and then wait for them to turn <laughs> around. And I'm like, well, that's not really what I had in mind for sneaking in. Well, I will say uh, this is not that solution. Nope. You still have to basically blitz those guys. But there is <laughs> okay. a there is a thing. Uh, there is an option. There, there's a thing that happens if you go down huh. instead of. Forward. OK, that's and really I, cool. I, I totally agree with the. Especially out of the demo, I think the the Shinobi chapter is the strongest. It's one of my personal favorites out of the whole set. Uh, I won't. I don't really want to talk too much about the ones that have not been in the demo yet. Mm. But especially because I think out of the three they chose, it really is the best one that demonstrates its kind of special shtick like right away. Mm. The the Imperial China one I, uh, does kind of have a, a neat thing that happens uh, after the point where the demo ends. Um, and the wow. alien one basically doesn't have its gimmick at all <laughs> during the demo. <laughs> the the ninja one, I think it really is. I'm glad they picked that one for the demo because I think it mm. really is the best showcase of what makes this game potentially a little different. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to a few people that tried the demo and went in being like, oh, 
I thought this was just like another Octopath mm. game. And it's not, like at all. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people who expected, you know, every chapter to just be little tiny traditional JRPG arcs. And that's really not at all the case for a lot of them. Some of them lean towards it a little more, but it's it's very bizarre kind of how some of these differ. I mean, the Imperial China one seemed pretty, pretty standard JRPG stuff. So I'm intrigued to see where that one goes, because, yeah, out of the three, I, it was weird to play that one first because you're like, oh, I guess the game is exactly what I thought it was. <laughs> and then, yeah, you play the ninja one and you're like, wait, no. Wait, what? And then you play Cube and you're just like, nothing happens in this chapter. Like, <laughs> I found it a little boring. Um, there's one really cool moment, which I don't want to spoil, but you, you see a thing and you're like, whoa, uh, what is that? Other than that, it was a lot of walking around. And that that's kind of sort of the, the main thing that I wasn't entirely sold on with Live Alive is how long it takes everybody to animate moving. It's, <laughs> it, oh, there's so much of it. <laughs> I did notice too in the uh, in the the cube chapter specifically, like the elevator takes forever, yeah. and oh even like when you can you're... skip it, you can. You, know you noticed? That? Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm so glad you noticed. Yeah, because when I did, I was like, whoa, my, I I I don't have to look at my phone now for five seconds uh, or yeah. whatever. You know, it just yeah. It's it's really weird. It kind of ends up killing the tension, especially in the cube chapter, because the conversations that people are having, the actual dialogue that's happening doesn't feel like natural dialogue because someone will say something and then someone will take three seconds to walk across the room and then they'll reply and it's like that's not hmm. how things work and people will like wait for other people to finish animating before they say something as well so yeah i i understand that there was a lot of work they had to do in remaking this game that's actually like nine games in one but it would have been nice if the animations were just, just a tiny bit faster. Maybe, maybe they'll maybe they'll listen to this video and they'll they'll patch it up maybe. before. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's very likely. Game devs love doing things in the run up to launch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah, they'll thank us. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I agree with that. I, I would say you know it, it's one of the things where it's showing its age a little bit, and they you know I think went to you know we have the HD two D visuals, but it still kind of paces it out like cutscenes in an old SNES game. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it absolutely drags at times. Yeah. Especially in the cube chapter, because, you know, it's really just talk to, you know, have a bunch of talking and then navigate your way to the next talking place. <laughs> uh, again, yeah. I'm really surprised they picked that for one of the demos. Because, uh, you know, there's a part of me that eats up the kind of reference to the pop culture it, it, it's pulling from. Yeah. Uh, but that that's about it, at least in the demo portion. Which three would you have picked? I'm curious. Oh geez, um, <laughs> I, I definitely would have gone. I, I think the the ninja chapter is a is a is a solid choice. Yeah. I think the I think they refer to it as near future to differentiate from the far future. I think yeah. that one ha has a uh, kind of neat opening, and I'd say that one feels at least from my memory, it feels a little more the most traditional RPG. Okay, uh, you know, get your party together and do stuff, but it still has its own little gimmicks. I may be wrong, but that one looks kind of. Blade Runnery to me. Maybe. Is, that, is that the one that has the main character that looks like uh, barely similar to Cloud from Final Fantasy VII? I mean, spiky <laughs> hair. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Very, very tight trousers and no shirt. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that one pulls a lot from like uh, it, it's like a weird mishmash of a couple different animes. There's like a little bit of Akira vibe, a little bit oh, okay. of like certain mecha vibes. Uh, yeah. It kind of just puts together a lot of the different genres that would be like near future sci-fi kind of stuff. So there's robots, there's psychics, there's it's all kinds of fiction stuff just thrown together. And then I don't really know how you would handle it demo wise, but I also kind of dig the uh, I think the um, the modern day, the the mm -hmm. fighting one. Yeah, it's rocky sort of. Kind of, yeah. It's very, well, I mean, it's Street Fighter, basically. Um. It, it's very, you know, just like. It's all focused on just combat. It's just another example of how, like, you know, yeah, this is similar to a lot of RPGs, but this isn't what I expected when I started this chapter. <laughs> yeah, I think I would do those three. The prehistory one is also uh, really interesting. So I don't know how you two felt about this, but leading up to... And I, I suppose Kevin's views might be a little different here. Uh, maybe, maybe Kevin can try to remember how he felt back in the day. But I think, for me, the excitement about playing this game wasn't really the characters and the, the worlds that you get to jump into. Like I, I went into this demo kind of knowing 
I, I watched the, the Did You Know Gaming video a long time ago and I've watched the trailers and otherwise I tried to keep, you know, kind of keep blinders up. So I went in kind of knowing nothing, but I didn't really care about any of the characters going in. I just wanted to know why people like this game, what makes it so unique. Uh, and I wanted to play this classic RPG that we never got, you know, uh, but now that I've played it and kind of and, you know, hearing Kevin talk about these other characters has definitely helped, you know, raise my interest. But but even before that, too, I've been I feel more invested in these like, you know, small stories. And I like the, for example, the prehistoric age. I think I saw that in a trailer and was like, oh, that's just Chrono Trigger. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but now I like <laughs> where's I Ayla? Yeah, right. Yeah. But but like now I want to learn about that little kid more. Um, and I like can't wait to try more of the game. But so I guess kind of the question I'm trying to ask here is after playing the demo, maybe, maybe this is just more for Kate, but has your views changed? Do you do you care more about the game than you did before? How, how do you how do you feel? I guess that's really not a question for Kevin at all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I got really excited about the game, writing the like everything you need to know kind of guide to Live Alive because I didn't know anything. And then the editor was like, hey, can you do this? And I was like, but I don't know anything. But the answer is no one really knew anything. So I just did a bunch of... Well, Kevin, Kevin knew everything. Kevin is the only... But true. Well, <laughs> yeah, you should have written it. And did you know gaming, Daz? But, but I, I will say, you know, my original experience way back in the day, I really knew nothing. I mean, I was like, a, hey, I haven't heard of this. I guess I'll try this game out. <laughs> and I mean, that I knew nothing going in, which is honestly, I think, the best way to go about it, which somewhat defeats the purpose of listening to us talk about it right now. But if you weren't going to check it out already... <laughs> This is the reason to do it. <laughs> and I yeah. think even we, we've still been pretty like we've been pretty vague about some things. So like even if you don't feel like we've spoiled the experience for you either. But just wanted to throw that out yeah. there. Oh, there's a lot that we have not. Heard. I absolutely don't think we've yeah. spoiled anything. We haven't even discussed who like the bad guys are or anything. I think we've done a <laughs> great job. <laughs> That's a good point. I think that the main thing that I've sort of come away thinking that I didn't think before is that I'm not sure how I feel about the voice acting. I'm Whoa. guessing there wasn't voice acting in the original. Definitely not. I don't think no. so. If if so, it would have just been dots. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, burp, beep, beep, beep. yeah that, that's one thing that I, I will say I, I've so far liked it better than some of the other uh, recent kind of retro style HDT stuff. I'll, I'll be honest, mm -hmm. I didn't really care for it in Octopath uh, or even Triangle Strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them I switched to Japanese because it's just that kind of effect of like, even if they are hamming it up, I can't tell as well because I just don't, you know, I don't I don't speak fluent Japanese. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually do. I, I said this way back for I don't remember what game, but I, I actually do wish that more of these kind of retro either remakes or love letter type style stuff. I, I get the compulsion to add voice acting, and I think that's cool. I sometimes wish they gave me the option to be able to switch over to a dot 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 track. Yeah. Mm. Like there's mm -hmm. something about that sound and like, you know, having slightly different pitches for different characters and that kind of thing. Like I think it it's kind of that same thing of, you know, not having voice acting for your main character. It lets you put your personality in there. You yeah. know, it's like the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and the the voice acting is a little bit hit and miss. For me, it was it's just sort of lacking in atmosphere because all of the voice acting is given exactly the same treatment. So it all just sounds like it's being recorded in a booth. It doesn't sound like you're on a spaceship or you're outside. It just sounds like you're recording it in a padded room and it's really obvious. And so it sort of takes you out of the action a little bit because it's not it's not immersive, I guess. Yeah. I'll have to try to pay more attention to that too when I when I play more of the game because I didn't notice that initially, but mm. I could see I can see your issues with that for, you know, anybody who, you know, pays enough attention. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say for from my standpoint on it, the kind of vibe I got, and I don't know this for a fact, so I don't take this as, you know, some insider info. The kind of vibe I got was similar to some other voiceover work I've heard before where it's not only done in a booth, but it's done individually, mm -hmm. meaning that you don't have voice actors playing off each other. You don't have yeah. mm -hmm. conversation flow. A lot of stuff is just kind of said as singular statement, and it doesn't always work out with how it you know puts the scene together that was really the feeling i got was a lot of like you know someone recorded all of their lines uh and mm -hmm. some of it works out great and individually even the lines might sound good but then it's like 
when it's someone's reply to something else, it's like, that wasn't really the tone I expected that to be in. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's not helped by the thing I mentioned earlier, where everyone walks slowly across a room before replying to somebody. So it, it does feel a little stilted in terms of like conversational flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there are some limitations of like the fact that they... You know, I haven't played the original, so I guess I can't directly compare to it, but I can, you know, we know what the Super Nintendo and Famicom ran like. Uh, and I think maybe there are some aspects where they tried to keep the the on-screen elements as faithful as possible and kept keep the walking, you know, because since they didn't have voice acting back then. Like, for example, I, I really actually enjoyed the, the voice acting in the Shinobi uh, chapter. Like mm -hmm. I, I was, I, I specifically wrote notes and was like, man, the voice acting in this game is incredible. <laughs> and then I don't know which, if it was the, the China chapter or the, uh, or the, uh, the mechanical heart one, but, but I do remember my thoughts changed <laughs> and was like, well, maybe, maybe they're not all so great, yeah. but it, to me, to me, it was a bit more situational. I think I appreciated it in some and didn't in others. And, but I'm curious to try it in Japanese too. And maybe that'll be something that I toggle between you know like an, an alternate playthrough or something too but. kevin how how faithful do you feel that the game beyond the fact that you know we have voice acting now like have you noticed and you know a bit of maybe like translation changes have you noticed anything else that's really like has anything stood out to you as being like just blatantly different you know um okay so you know to preface this uh while i have played the fan translation the last time i really gave it a full playthrough was i Geez, probably over a decade ago. It's it's been a while now. Kevin, you're you're over ten years old. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> oh my uh, gosh, bills suck. So uh, you know, my memory is not perfect for things like translations, that kind of stuff. There's a couple little things that I remember, like I, I said for the the character naming scheme. Um, I would say though, at least based on how I remember it, this has been very faithful so far. I haven't really noticed anything that feels like a change in mechanics or a change in how certain scenes played out. I'm sure there are some individual lines that are handled differently just because of, you know, different translation teams. I mean, that would even happen today if you had two teams translate the same thing, right? You're always going to mm, have those sure. kind of variants. Sure. But I would say that overall, aside from the voice acting and the visual change, uh, this has felt very faithful to me. I've compared, so, like I've watched some playthroughs of the old games and I've, I've even watched a side-by-side -side video um, which was just made with the trailer so it's not like a fully accurate side-by-side -side, but it is insanely accurate like they have recreated it almost one-to-one -one. the best place for seeing it is actually in the cube chapter because it just looks the same but prettier I mm -hmm. uh, they oh it's so faithful it's so cool <laughs> yeah love that have you two noticed too how, depending on where you're standing in certain places in the game, you'll notice like different sounds? Really? Uh, like for example, in in the Imperial China one, when you're up kind of like in the mountain area, like where you first start out, once you walk out of the house, uh, if you're standing, like let's say in, uh, you're standing on the grass, I, I can picture it very well. And there's like some kind of mountains like behind you, but then there might be like an open gap. I think. I, I could be wrong, so please, people can correct me in the comments if I am. But I noticed when I would walk in between the, like, in the gap there, you could hear the wind, like, howling wow. uh, stronger. I talked about this in the in the preview, but um, I played the Wild West chapter or a portion yeah. of it. And uh, and there's a moment where, it's not really a moment, it's just, it's a thing. I don't know why I'm calling it a moment. But um, uh, there's, like, a, you know, the town that you're in is just a dirt road or a dirt. It's just dirt. There's no pave. It, it's wild west there's no paved roads and um but you can see little uh tracks kind of in the in the dirt for where like a horse-drawn carriage would maybe have gone through like going in up to like each of the the buildings and and they're all very like specifically placed and it's little details like that that have kind of solidified the fact that this project feels like such a like a labor of love and i know yeah absolutely i know i probably anybody i think could say that about any video game anybody that works on something for that amount of time i think an amount of love has to go into it it's it's really exciting to hear that you kind of like that for kevin that you feel that this is as you remember it you know and then for for kate that like that it's so impressively accurate that's just mm, that's really yeah. cool like on top of still adding in these extra little details to kind of make it fun and uh, and exciting for people that have never tried it before. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't played yeah. Octopath Traveler or Triangle Strategy, 
So maybe this is the case for both of those, but they knocked it out of the park with this visual style. It's so pretty. It's so cool. Yeah, all of them have been great looking. I would say each game has looked better though. I think it's been a little bit of a, in a lot of ways, I feel like Octopath, uh, while I really do love that game a lot, uh, it does at times feel almost like a tech demo. You know, it was like the first time mm, we're yeah. doing this visual style. Yeah. And each game is kind of refined a little bit. Like I think one of the biggest things I've noticed is that Triangle Strategy did this a little bit and I've noticed a lot more in, in uh, the demo at least for Live Alive. They've really toned down some of the... Uh, like glittery effects. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of that in Octopath that's almost blinding at times. Yeah. Uh, and it's still present here and there, but it feels like it's being used a little more, there's just a little more care with it. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that each HD 2D game has just been refining the concept more and more, which is awesome. I, I think the thing that's really cool about this too, right, is, you know, you talk about the attention to detail and the labor of love and that kind of thing, which again, you can say that for a lot of games. I think what's, really amazing about it in this context is that you know this is the kind of attention to detail that you'd hope to see for remaking some game that has a lot of stakes for coming back right like you want Final Fantasy 7 remake to really nail how it translates stuff from the original game and what it does differently you want a remake of you know if they ever did Metal Gear Solid again right like you need that to really make sure they do it right Live Alive is this as far as Western audiences are concerned, this random title, as Kate mentioned earlier, it didn't even sell that well in Japan. It really is this kind of almost forgotten one game that Square did, and yet it's getting this kind of treatment, which is amazing. I, I've talked to a few people about this, the, the route that Square's been going on lately. We're hitting a point where nothing really feels off the table anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that they're going to remake every single thing in their library, but you know, if Live Alive is getting that treatment, I mean, what what else could be happening at this point? Because it's just wild that that happened. Uh, Kate, I, you weren't around for this, but Kevin and I, we uh, I, I spewed uh, this just really dumb uh, theory, which I really still hope comes true someday. Please, please, Square, make it happen. Uh, we we talked about uh, just the possibility of Chrono Trigger getting a remake and who would do it and what it would look like and all that. And uh, if if anyone likes Chrono Trigger, which I know lots of people do, they should go watch that video. Uh, but in that discussion, I remember Kevin was very... I was kind of on the side of like, I want a cell shaded Chrono Trigger, but still turn based. Uh, and Kevin, I, f I feel like you more kind of wanted the HD 2D route. Uh, and I, I don't know how you still feel, or maybe I'm completely wrong. Was that was that kind of where you stood? Do you, do you recall? Yeah, I think my stance was that I would actually be totally fine with them just making the game look right on modern displays and be great. But if they were going to go the remake route, yeah, HD 2D would be my personal preference. I would take any form at this point. I mean, if they did a cell shaded <laughs> art style, that'd be great. If they wanted to try and do a full 3D thing, a la FF7 remake, sure, why not? Uh, but in terms of what I would personally, I think, be uh, especially hyped for, yeah, I, 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 I really like the HD 2D art style. I, I think that especially with the improvements we're seeing with each title, um, it's just something that uh, I, I want to see more stuff in it, which I think we already know a few more, right? Isn't uh, Dragon Quest Three getting right. treatment yep. too? You're right. Yep, Dragon Quest Three is, uh, and at this point, I, I think I feel like I read a report somewhere, or a, not a report, but a, uh, an interview that they have more projects in development, but we just don't know what they are. To, but I, I guess the the point that I was I was kind of trying to get across there was I. In that moment, I do remember, Kevin, that you were you were not opposed to that, you know, the cell shaded aspect. But I kind of was like, I don't really want HD 2D. Like, I just, I didn't. But I think this, this Live Alive remake has kind of shown me how faithful something could still be, but how just impressive a, a remake in this style can, can be, you know, and how much character it can still have. Because I think that was the thing that I really wanted to, like, if we ever get a Chrono Trigger remake, which I know is not what we're here to talk about, I just want it to, I want it to be able to do whatever the developers wanted to do back then, but maybe couldn't now. Um, I was worried that an HD 2D, 2D remake kind of wouldn't be enough, but I think seeing, like, the different, like, little miniature cutscenes almost that, uh, that Live Alive does, you know, like, I think they, they have a few of those, like, right in the beginning of the, the Shinobi chapter as they're introducing the game and, and they kind of show off, you know, the lighting effects and they show off the big castles and stuff. And and uh, it's just it's really it's really impressive. And it gives me uh, or I, I trust, you know, I trust if 
You know, even if Mother 3 came back like this, even I was really dead set on like claymation or bust uh, for Mother 3 and Earthbound. But I think claymation. Yeah. I mean, that would be cool. I'm not going to argue. Yeah. <laughs> like when Link's Awakening, when that remake got announced or when it got shown off, I was like, I had a pit in my stomach because I was like, this isn't what I thought Link's Awakening would look like. And then I, I grew uh, to love it. But I think if <laughs> I basically Live Alive has shown me that I think if any game gets remade in HD 2D, as long as it was sprite-based originally, you know, like don't go remake Halo with, I guess actually Halo HD 2D <laughs> would be kind of kind of crazy in itself, but. That would be rad. But I just trust it. I really, this game has kind of shown me, I think what uh, what they can do with it. Cause I played I played a chunk of Triangle Strategy and Octopath and, um, and I, I liked it, but I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just have different feelings now, I think. Yeah, and, and like I said, I think they've gotten better. I, I, for me, personally, a lot of the shots in the Ninja one look good, but it's that opening scene for the Imperial China chapter that I was just like, oh. Yeah, that has Because, you know, in the original game, that's just standard SNES, you know, kind of almost top-down looking. In this one, you're getting the sense of depth. There's the valley, like, past the mountain. I mean, it's a beautiful-looking shot. I got really distracted by all of the fruits in that scene. You know what I mean? There's all these baskets of, like, various mm. colored orbs, but they're all, like, done with pixel textures i don't know i was just like look at this it's a little yellow lemon thing i love it <laughs> i just really like the juxtaposition of like super low res textures and like beautiful mountains in the background it's great. yeah absolutely yeah this game does feel like like i don't know if i'd recommend it for everybody so far from what i've played but i think people that like enjoy rpgs or just enjoy classic games and kind of like it's kind of like the earthbound thing so far from what i'm getting is like you just kind of should play this game to play something different and and it's just it's just so it's so unlike anything else from the time and they've done such a good job of making sure that it's, it's brought back for the people that never got to play back then which was no one but yeah i mean it's just it's absolutely one of those kind of games where it's just either going to click for you or not I, I like I've talked to a few people who were just like, I tried it. I didn't like it. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Totally fair. Yeah. It, it, but I also don't know a great way to like convince someone other than just have them play it. Like I can I can review it and talk about it. And I think that's good information to give out. But ultimately, this is one of those games where you just kind of need to dive in, which is why I'm glad there's a demo. I mean, really, like seriously, anyone listening that hasn't tried it yet, just try the demo. Yeah, yeah. it's it's free. Just do it. <laughs> play the what? play the ninja chapter. See how you feel. You were talking too about this too, Kate, but like the. Yeah. This kind of feels like, you know how when like a movie or a game comes out and everybody's like, whoa, wow, that was so amazing. What else did they do? Uh, this kind yeah. of feels like a game for those people that like want to just like try something else that like maybe their favorite game designers worked on that they didn't know about. Like I, until you, you referenced this person earlier, but the director of the or original game, uh, Takashi Tokida, I think it was, uh, I didn't know was a writer on Final Fantasy IV, which was like the first mm -hmm. Final Fantasy game to really like full send like uh, an incredibly like deep narrative. And uh, so now like I'm kind of seeing some of the similarities between these two games and it has me like even more excited to just give this game a go. So that way I can, yeah. you know, I, I just want to play more of their stuff. I mean, did you know one of the game's designers was the director of Mother 3? Did you know that? I did not know that. Now you do. <sighs> Yeah, it's it's basically like, you know, when you get like a super group of a bunch of mm. members of famous bands, different bands, and they come together to make like one incredible band. It's like that, but in reverse, like a bunch of incredible people who maybe weren't super incredible famous yet, but would be. So it's like Chrono Trigger, Mother 3, the composer for like the Kingdom Hearts games. <laughs> yeah. They all worked on this game. Oh, yeah. Shimomura. Yeah. Oh, no, her work yeah. is amazing. It's it's like th this game is the genesis of what they would all go on to do. This is the the time when they got to try out a weird idea and it didn't work then really, but it didn't stop them from going on and being like, let's try again, but better. And then they did it. Hooray. <laughs> it's a bummer that this game kind of got dealt the hand that it did in Japan back in the day too. Because from what, mm -hmm. I've, what I've heard, Secret of Mana and Final Fantasy 3 or six, whatever you would like to refer to it as, both kind of like came out around that same time and then Chrono Trigger was shortly after. And it, I don't know if that really did affect the sales of this game. And, and maybe maybe people looked at it and were like, I don't 
I don't care about that. Final Fantasy VI is coming out soon, and I gotta save my money. And now, and now, Xenoblade Chronicles Three is coming out uh, the week after this game, so it's it's happened. The cycle continues. <laughs> uh, but uh, but hopefully, hopefully, if people have made it to the end of this chat and they are not con- and they somehow were not convinced, um, hopefully, just just like Kevin, like 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 both of you said, like all three of us have been saying, go play the demo uh, if you're interested. If we haven't spoiled it all for you, because really, it's it's just a you just got to play it you just got to try it and see if it's for you and you'll know i th- i think you'll if you play the demo you'll you'll figure out pretty quickly if uh, this is your cup of tea or not well of course let us know in the comments down below uh if you've played the live live demo let us know if you've played the original game maybe uh just let us know your overall thoughts uh and if you know if there was something that really uh, surprised you or or really intrigued you about about what you played of the game or the coverage you've seen of it so far that maybe we didn't touch on uh let us know just let us know any of your thoughts about this game uh, down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you grant that subscribe button another live by clicking it? Because the subscribe button, it needs all of the live it, alive it can get. Uh, and then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we put up future live alive chats, because that's all this channel is now. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Kate and Kevin, for coming around for this discussion. So nice to have you here. Stay safe out there, everyone, and we will see you all next time. I think we should make we should make a radio station called KKZ. <laughs> That'd be so great. Could you imagine if we had a podcast? I'm for it. Yeah.